the three biggest mistakes hot yoga teachers make in class, mastering your communication. By understanding these mistakes, we can learn from them master our communication. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end that can make all the difference in how you can help your students. Mistake number one, many teachers are too focused on themselves and how they're doing and not focused on the students and how the students are doing. Worry about yourself. By focusing on yourself, how am I doing? Am I connecting with my students? Are they really hearing what I'm saying? You're now out of the present moment, therefore you're not effective. If you really want to know how you're doing, record your class. In fact, in the Barkin Method online teacher training programs, that's what people do. They have a homework assignment to record their class. When you record your class and you can watch it later on, now you can take a look and see how you're doing. But if you do it in the present moment of the class, I mean, every now and then you have to check in and, and make sure that you're connecting properly, but it can't be your entire focus. Me, Fab, pay attention. Put the focus on them. And one of the reasons why people are constantly checking in and watching themselves is because people are nervous. People are self-conscious. And I've said this before on my channel. I've got a, a saying in my teacher training programs, nervousness is selfishness. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. But before we continue on, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell. You want to learn all about hot yoga, tutorials and flows and factoids. Hit the subscribe button and the like button right now. So what do I mean by that? When I said before, you're focusing on yourself, not on the students, therefore that's selfishness. Get the focus off of you onto your students. Nervousness is selfishness. Now it's okay to be nervous if you channel that nervousness into the energy of bringing energy into the classroom, not allowing the nervousness to stifle your expression. Elvis Presley would get nervous before every single performance. Some of you know that I'm a part-time singer. When I have a big show, I get nervous before my performance, but I use that nervousness channel it into the performance to boost my energy, but if you allow the nervousness to take over, it'll stifle your expression. Mistake number two, and this is for a lot of the new students, definitely in the hot yoga world, definitely in the Bikram world, but not just the hot yoga world, in the Yangar world too, especially with new teachers, they put the focus and the attention or their intention on disciplining their students, not putting the attention on getting the students to do the best yoga that they can. Many times the new teachers, the only time they break their script, the only time that they come out of their repeated pattern of speech, which is going to be by the way, mistake number three, the only time they break out of the dialogue is when someone's breaking the rules. Now, I'm all for everyone not breaking rules and everyone doing the same posture at the same time so it doesn't distract people. That's important, but that's not the only time you want to break out of the rhythm. And that should not be your main and focus on the class. Many times people have this drill sergeant type of energy in their classroom. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. And that's where their main focus is, not in getting the students to do the best possible yoga they can, changing your intention. Another reason why a lot of newer teachers become the disciplinarian, the drill sergeant, because they really don't know enough. They're not really that experienced yet. And so they sort of hide behind that discipline. I was the same way when I first opened my studio. I was inexperienced. Yoga studios were very, there are very few yoga studios in the world, let alone in the country. And so I, I knew just enough to become a teacher in the beginning. And I was young. So I used, I sort of hid behind the discipline. As I opened up, as I dropped the discipline, I put the focus on the students doing the best yoga they can and made all the difference. If you're interested in becoming a Bark and Method hot yoga teacher, either a live training or an online training, I put links in the description below. We'd love to have you join the family. This mistake many times is made by the newer student. As you get more advanced, as you become more of an experienced teacher, you start to command the discipline of the room without necessarily enforcing it. It just happens automatically. People sometimes will be talking in class. Instead of me yelling at them for talking in class and putting a negative energy into the room, let's say we're, we're, we're wiping our hands off and getting ready for standing at knee, and I hear people talking to each other, I'll make the joke, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. People laugh. I'm making fun, but they get it and they stop talking. But now I've created a positive energy in the room, not a negative energy in the room and still enforce the rule. And as you get more experienced, you walk into that yoga room and you just command their attention. You command their respect. You don't have to be enforcing the discipline. It just happened this morning. We were doing class and before class started, there was all regulars. They knew each other and they were chatty, 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 chatty. I come in, they're still chatty, 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 but now it's time to start. And I say, okay guys, let's get going. Feet together, toes and heels touching, hands at your heart center, let's set an intention. All of a sudden I had their attention. There was no more chatting. We're down to business. I don't have to be sergeant at arms. I command it 
with my presence. So now as you become more experienced, you're gonna command it with your presence. They're gonna, you're gonna come in and you're gonna take over because they want you to come in and take over. They want you to come in with confidence and take over that class and lead them through the process. If you're focusing on yourself, not on them, mistake number one, you're putting all the tension on discipline. They're gonna be fearing you opposed to really being affected by your teaching. Mistake number three, and as promised, the most important, definitely the biggest mistake, and one thing you, that yoga teachers need to address and hopefully correct. And the mistake is, drum roll, they talk in a repeated pattern of speech. They sound the same way from the first pose almost to the last pose in the same repeated pattern. And at one point, the students are just going to tune them out in a very, very short period of time if you're just talking in a repeated pattern of speech. Elevator music. Especially if you're, let's say, in the Bikram world and you know what posture is next. It's almost like it doesn't even matter what they're saying. You're in your own world. They're not correcting. They're not encouraging. They're just repeating a dialogue. They're repeating a script. Therefore, you're not getting the student's ear. So how can we change that? We need to change that by breaking the pattern. For example, and this is a hot yoga pose, the famous half moon, the very first pose we do after the first breathing exercise. And what happens is people will do, they'll go into their dialogue. They'll go into repeated pattern of speech, arms overhead, interlace the fingers, index finger release, take a deep breath in, push your hips to the left, reach your arms to the right, bring your chest out. That's my repeated pattern of speech. And if every sentence sounds the same, at one point you're going to strangle the teacher. <laughs> or you're just gonna tune them out. Well, how we have to break the pattern is by finding something that's important in the pose. I call it the gem. Find the gem. It doesn't have to be the most important thing in the pose and explain that or express that point in a different tone. So well, here we are. Arms overhead, interlace the fingers, hips to the left, arms to the right, and make sure that left hip comes forward. You don't want that hip to come back. If you bring the hip forward and square to the mirror, it's gonna put you in a better position. Not what I said, how I said it. All of a sudden, I explain the point in a different tone, what I call conversation voice, and now I'm gonna get the student's ear. Because that's the thing. You don't want them to just tune you out like elevator music. You want your words to have an effect on the students to do the best possible yoga that they can. Now, side note, we can't talk like that all the time because it would be too casual. You don't want to be in a constant conversation voice. So I call the teacher voice and the conversation voice. When do we use the teacher voice? Arms overhead, interlaced fingers for the transitions. That's the most important time. You need to have a teacher voice and a cadence to get through a 75, 90 minute class. But if we're always in a conversation voice, it's too casual, especially in the intense energy that we wanna create in hot yoga, in the Barkan world, in the Bikram world, or if you're in a vinyasa class, using the teacher voice for transitions, but then breaking the pattern. Now that's easier said than done, and that's one of the things that I do in my teacher training programs, live and online. By the way, if you're interested in becoming a Barkin Method Hot Yoga teacher, I put links in the description below. I'm coaching the teachers to first establish their teacher voice, establish their own rhythm and their own unique, authentic sound. Then I start to coach them on the authentic voice. So how do I do that? Let's say they just taught a posture. Let's let's use half moon pose, for example, and they were in the teacher voice the whole time. After they're done, I'll say to them, okay, when you're doing half moon, what do you think about? What's helping you to do the pose? Let's say side half moon, which is in the old days, another side note, was pars Ardha Chandrasana, side half moon. The real half moon in the hot yoga world was the back bend. So I'll say to them, what's helping you? Now, they may not really understand what I'm saying. All of a sudden, they'll turn to the class. We have a sort of a mock class we do in our exercise. And they'll say, when I do the pose, I like to bring my palms together. I said, no, no, no. Talk to me, turn to me and tell me what it is that you do. Let's say your mother is out of town somewhere and she just started doing this yoga and she calls you on the phone and she says, okay, Larry, I've been doing this yoga you told me to do. I'm having a really tough time getting my palms together in half moon, what should I do? You're not gonna say, okay, mom, interlace your fingers, bring your palms together. No, you're not gonna talk to her that way. You're gonna say, mom, you wanna try to get the base of the palms together. By getting the base of the palms together, that's gonna help to open up your shoulders. Maybe you're feeling tension in your shoulders, try that. That's the tone, that's the conversation tone. So now I have them turn to the class and say it, and they go right back into the teacher's voice. It's like this magic curtain. And I'll tell you why they do that, and one way we can break it. I believe that one of the reasons why people don't wanna break out of their teacher voice is because it's vulnerable to be authentic in class. It's vulnerable to bring your own true conversation tone to the classroom because there could be a rejection. 
that's going to happen. But you have to take the risk to do that. Yes, maybe somebody's not going to like your personality and they're not going to want your, to do your class. But if you're authentic, if you're putting yourself out there, you're going to be so much more effective. I used to say to people, I could line up a thousand people down the street that don't like my class. They don't like you. I don't like you. Hopefully I can line up triple or, or ten times that on the other side of the street. I love you, man. So we have to allow ourselves to take the risk to be vulnerable enough to allow our authentic voice come through. And that's how we're going to not not just be a good teacher, but be a great teacher. That's how we're really going to get the student's ear, but more importantly, the student's heart and make that teacher-student connection. So let's sum it up. Mistake number one, get the attention off of yourself, the self-consciousness, and put it on them. It's not about you. It's about them. It's not about how great a yoga class you're teaching, but it's how you're able, your words are able to connect with your students. Mistake number two, don't make discipline your focus. Make yoga your focus once again getting your students to do the best yoga they possibly can mistake number three break your pattern you don't want to be talking in a repeated pattern of speech the whole time it's like elevator music and they're going to tune you out if you want to really affect your students you got to get your students ear and how are you going to do that by getting conversational to master the art of communication not so you'll be the best yoga teacher on the planet but that you're going to help your students do the best yoga they possibly can that's really the common denominator between the three getting your students to do the best yoga that they can and making that your intention so that's our episode for today thank you so much for watching if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing hit the notification bell any questions comments put them down below i'm happy to get back to you and i thank you for supporting the channel and i'll see you the next video Bye, everyone.